Welcome to the Catholic Midlife Podcast, where we're addressing the challenges and the opportunities of midlife from a uniquely Catholic perspective. Join us each week as we spark a midlife renewal and create a firm foundation for the next wonderful, exciting, awesome season of life. Hello and welcome to the Catholic Midlife Podcast. It's great to be here with you. I'm Curtis. I'm here with my fellow host. Hello, everyone. Karen. Yes, yes, this is Karen. <laughs> Thank you for naming me. We have, we have, you are packed and not unpacked, Karen. Never fear. <laughs> Our listener Kay shared with us that she appreciated the quote from Christe Fidelis Leici, and I'll provide it in full here. It's it's set at 58. The fundamental objective of the formation of the lay faithful is an ever clearer discovery of one's vocation and the ever greater willingness to live it so as to fulfill one's mission. Not only is it that, the ever clearer discovery and willingness to live it, John Paul II adds, God calls me and sends me forth as a laborer in his vineyard. He calls me and sends me forth to work for the coming of his kingdom and history. So this is an exhortation to, to live and discover and refine our vocation, our relationship with God, and to go forth as a laborer in the vineyard. The vineyard is the whole world. Hmm. That's what you call a target-rich environment. <laughs> <laughs> something for everyone in the vineyard. Well, that's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really like that quote. It, it highlights part of what we're trying to get at in this season of meaning and purpose, which is this is not an optional add-on to the Christian life. Discovering and engaging with and continuing to refine your purpose and step into it is a central aspect of living the Christian life. It's essential to living the Christian life. Yeah, I don't know what to add to that. I mean, you can't labor in, labor in the vineyard if you have no task. Mm. You have no idea what's going on. Right, right. That's a great point. And one of the things that I've been reflecting on as I've been just reading a lot about our vocation, our direction, finding our purpose is one thing that having that strong sense of purpose does it is it helps us to clarify pretty easily really what needs to be a part of our life and what doesn't. So it's like we always have the ongoing question, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? Who am I supposed to be growing into? What is the thing that I ought to be spending my time, my energy, my passion on. Yeah. And to do that, what we're going to talk about today is this idea of packing and unpacking your bags. Right. We're always unpacking them and repacking them. And we'll try to explain what that means. But this is, I, I love this concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Curtis, why don't you tell that story <laughs> about your trip to the Boundary Waters? Oh, sure. Do you mind? So, so I lived in Texas in high school, but we would get on a bus, a big scout troop, and we would travel all the way to Ely, Minnesota to go to the beautiful, pristine boundary waters. Mm -hmm. And we had to carry things on our back, and our personal allotment of gear was strictly controlled in terms of the what. It could be and changes of clothes that were allowed. It was really important to bring extra dry socks. I learned that. This was my second trip to the Boundary Waters. Oh, oh, so you had been and made all your mistakes. I had been. And one thing I was determined to do, and I didn't remember this until my mom was telling you, Karen, <laughs> but she was laughing because I had this little bag and I kept packing it and unpacking it. And I had this big jar of Tabasco sauce. <laughs> Oh, 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 I know those big ones. You were trying to fit that oh, in no. your bag? <laughs> yeah. 
what's the point of the little one? So I had the big one <laughs> and I was determined to fit it in there. And, you know, I was taking things out that other people might consider essential, oh. but were not as important as bringing the Tabasco for that boring food that yeah. you're going to have on the canoe Yeah, the, the, the Minnesota boring food. Yeah, your mom was just laughs about it. Like there you were in the room, hours, hours of unpacking and repacking to fit it all in there. So did you get the hot sauce in? Oh yeah, you bet. <laughs> you betcha. You betcha. <laughs> so for people that don't know, Minnesota is famous for its bland food. Mm -hmm. It was, for many years, it was one of two states where Pace Picante sold an extra mild <laughs> flavor. <laughs> Only the Texan would know this. <laughs> Only the Texan would know this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, what was important to you was what you wanted to put in your bag and you had a mission, right? Yeah. Yeah. For how exactly. you wanted the trip to go and exactly. what you wanted it to be like and what you wanted to experience. And that's, that's a great analogy because this is a question that actually we always need to be asking ourselves, always asking ourselves, do I have what I need for where I'm going? And have I actually left behind everything that I don't need? Have I left behind everything that I don't need? It makes me think of this country song. I can't remember who sings it, but the, the refrain is, I have everything I need and nothing that I don't. Oh, there you go. I'll spare you me trying to sing that. Oh. <laughs> I have everything I need and nothing that I don't. Karen, I knew the, this couple. They were actually evangelicals, but they're, they're very faithful and wonderful people. And they had a strong purpose around hospitality. Hospitality was their thing. They, it was in, in the context of their church for the most part, and they would get people together. They would bring them together. They provided, uh, you know, often hospitality at your local church is called for in terms of some of the larger events and so mm -hmm. forth. And this created a lot of purpose and identity and vocation for them. And it drove some of their choices. They had to not do some things and put some things in their life so that they could continue to roll with the hospitality. I mean, this affected how they spent their time, where they went and where they lived in particular. That is, that's a really beautiful example, Curtis. And it's a beautiful gift and purpose around hospitality. And I could easily see how if they weren't super intentional and paying attention, other things could creep in and start to distract from that essential purpose and mission. That makes a lot of sense. And actually, I'm thinking myself about someone I was talking to recently, and this is more a situation of someone in entering into a new phase. She just recently retired. And so she's asking those questions about where am I going? And she kept saying, if I could just snap my fingers, I do X, Y, Z. And then immediately she'd say, oh, but I can't do that because of uh, this commitment and this thing and this, I own this house. And all these things she was carrying were like holding her down. And part of what we're saying here is we have to reverse how we think about it. We have to reverse that process. First, we ask, what's my purpose? Where am I going? Then we decide how much we're going to carry, what we're going to carry, and what we're going to let go of. It sounds like those are really big decisions for her. For instance, to quote unquote, get rid of a house. Mm -hmm. Having, when you don't know what you're trying to do, that's a really hard decision to make. Exactly. If, I mean, if there's not some big financial whatever, I'm kind of reading into this that since she was struggling over it, there may have been extended family or, or something, some kind of obstacles, some pushback mm -hmm. to her simply deciding what was convenient for her to do. Right, right. Well, I think it was the direction was unclear and the purpose question was unclear because purpose is like your direction 
or your North Star. And from there, you can make those decisions. And in fact, when you're clear about where you're going, it's like the decisions kind of snap into place and they can do it with a lot more clarity. Yeah. Well, I really can relate to being faced with this plethora of decisions and not knowing what to do and, and feeling lost. That, that really resonates with me. And this, what you said about if there's no purpose, there's no direction. Right. If there's no direction, then, then I'm starting to churn. I'm starting to spin my wheels. And man, I hate that feeling. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I think sometimes we think of purpose in a vague way. And if, if you're thinking of purpose and it's too vague, it won't inform your decisions the way that it's really meant to do. Sure. So determination is not purpose. Exactly. exactly. That's too bad. <laughs> I have a lot of determination. Yes. Yes. It, uh, pointing it in the right direction is kind of a problem. <laughs> I'm going to refrain from any stories oh, here. Oh, you're so... You're so discreet. <laughs> uh, so there was a point I wanted to make here about, okay, pretty much it's clear from your psychologist, your just across the board, having meaning and purpose is an essential part of your well-being, of living life in a way that thrives. And it's part of flourishing. Let's put it that way. And we've talked about that before, right? We talked about Martin Seligman and well being. We've talked about Aristotle and his vision of human flourishing. And this is a key and essential part to really flourishing as a human being. Well, this is so important. And as Catholics, we are more than willing to set aside our personal preferences to do the necessary, to do what's important, to live into our values. At the same time, however, God is a personal God that's working with us and helping us create purpose with him and to find things that, that engage us, that pull us forward. It's not, we have to carry our cross, but there's more to life than carrying the cross. We, we need to find that purpose and get out into the vineyard and, and get some good work and, and feel the reward and, and get the wage at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I like about what Aristotle and others say about human flourishing is it's not something you get. It's not like a static place you get to. It's something you do. It's an activity. It's not a state in life. It's more like a relationship to life, a way of engaging with life. A way of approaching it. A way of approaching life. Exactly. Karen, the life of virtue is so important to us. It's so important to us as Catholics. And eudaimonia, Aristotle conceived this in terms of what it is, what is this person trying to do what is their goal what is the what is what are the purposes they're trying to live out and of course for <laughs> for him the summit is sort of like somebody who lives in boston except it's athens the summit was <laughs> well we live in athens and we're men and the, what what is it what do you need to be to be a good athenian assuming you're one of the lucky free people with money mm -hmm. so his conception was, well, one thing we do is we have to be able to reason and we have to be able to govern ourselves. We, are, we live in this Athenian democracy. And he started to think of what it is that people needed to be able to do. What were the virtues they needed to have in order to live out their purpose? And it had some surprises. For instance, Amiability. Amiability was an important virtue for Aristotle because all those people, they in that crazy democracy, they had to talk to each other. They had to mm. work things out. They had to be 
you had to go around and share your point of view with others and get them to create a consensus with you. Wow, I really like that. I think (laughs) think we need to send some amiability to Washington. (laughs) It's a really, that's a really interesting point. Well, and it's a virtue that's that's been fading away yeah. from our society. But but really, the more interesting point to me, Karen, is that as we are thinking of our purpose, what it is we're trying to do, the, the virtues we need to do that purpose, we want to pack those virtues for sure. Oh, oh, I really like that. See, for Aristotle, virtues were not the point. Virtues yeah. were not the end and summit of of human life. They were tools. Mm. And it may be that virtue or character is destiny. There are people that kind of have that approach to life. And I'm thinking of philosophers and so forth. But at the same time, the, the virtue is for you to aid you to live out your purpose. Okay. Okay. So it's sort of like when I have a sense of the purpose and the direction, then I can say, okay, who do I need to be to enter into that? And what are the characteristics I need to pack in that bag to get where I'm going? Yeah. Who, who do I need to be? And always there's this question of what is it do I need to let go of? Right. And we, we should talk about suffering some at some point. Mm. This would be too big of a di- digression. I, I think uh, suffering is something that that we pack. We pack with us, but unnecessary suffering is something we have to leave behind. And mm. so often we would create it or exacerbate it. Right. But we're not trying to get rid of it. Right. That's a very interesting point. So one of the things this is making me think is, is sometimes when we think about, oh, what are we packing in our bag? We think, oh, well, what activities or commitments or job are we packing? But really what we're getting to here is we're also packing all sorts of things like who we are and personal goals, spiritual goals. Even, even you're making this point about suffering we pack a lot internally that we bring with us. And, and actually, there's a lot that we can let go of that we don't appreciate, probably even that it's possible to let go of. Well, it's true. And that's a very profound area, Karen. Just one example, give our listeners some idea of what we're talking about is in midlife, sometimes we have goals that we created years ago. Right. And we hung on to those and we're disappointed that we didn't reach them. But really, it makes no sense to be disappointed that we didn't reach that particular goal or, or whatever for, for many reasons. And, and those, we can carry that with us. We can carry that with us consciously and unconsciously. But and it's it's a big drain. Yeah. It's a big yeah. drain. That's part of unpacking before right. you pack your bag. Right. Yes. And and something I've experienced very profoundly in our coaching work is also we can carry a lot of negative emotion and and false beliefs about the world and ourselves. And and we can stick them there in our bag and and almost even forget that they're there. But those are also really important things to let go of and to unpack so that we can step into that purpose. Karen, we've been talking about unpacking and packing your bags and the purpose, the sense of purpose and meaning in our life that we are choosing, that we are collaborating with God to create, that is central Mm -hmm. to that process. And it's such an important process. Like if we're going to the boundary waters, the things that we're going to do there are very controlling as to what's going to go in the bag and what's not. Exactly. Exactly. So I'd like to leave our listeners with a question that they can take forward and ponder a little bit this week. And that question is, is what you're carrying, are the things you're carrying still the right things for where you're going for the rest of your life? Is there anything you need to unpack 
And do you know the purpose that gives direction to what you would be repacking? If you want some help in the process of unpacking and packing, if you need tips on how to get some Tabasco in those bags, <laughs> just let us know. We are here. We'd love to for you to check in with us. You can go to our website, thecatholicmidlife.com, and hit the big orange button for the consult. It is great to be here with you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Catholic Midlife Podcast. It's great to be here with you. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite app or platform. Leave a review that's so helpful so that others like you can find the podcast. And be sure to tell your friends. We'll see you next week.